inspiration. Um, Today's, today's program is very important. Um, we have a day of thanksgiving, we have a day of uh, testimonies, and we will realize later how important it is for us to do so. You all enjoyed your VOY, uh, VOY meetings, your VOY uh, trips, and not all are here yet, but I think more will come. Today I didn't have to go, usually when we enter the, uh, the stage, the podium, we have a line and then when the music goes, we follow the music and we have to walk a certain speed. And I never get that speed right. Uh, today I wouldn't have a problem because my, my whole body is sore so I automatically move slowly. But unfortunately I didn't have to uh, walk in. You see the picture here, uh, one man on the island and the other man on the boat. And the one man, he's hoping, yes, a boat is coming, where the other man is happy to see land. You know, perspective is very important. Today, as we will start sharing our testimonies and uh, giving thanks to the Lord, I wanted to give you a right perspective as to what we are going to do and what we are going to share. Uh, next, this man, Governor Bradford, he is a, a man, he was the governor in a place in the States where the first pilgrims came and they were establishing the area, their village. And they were planting and sowing and they reaped and the harvest was great and the Lord blessed them a lot. A lot. And this governor he had the idea that they will make a day to give thanks. And everyone was supposed to come between 9 and 12 o'clock, listen to the pastor, sing and give thanks to all the things that the Lord have, has blessed them with. Today, it, that day is called Thanksgiving. And that was in 1623, as you can say that, see there. Now, nothing is wrong to have a day, a certain day, as we have today, to come together and uh, praise and worship. It's actually very important. But even more important is to understand that that activity is something that we have to have as a lifestyle. Ah, uh, yeah, you can see here the, the people. Uh, next. The lifestyle of it is very important. In Ephesians 5, 19 and 20, we can read, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always, always give thanks to God the Father, everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this time that we have to remember the great things that you have done in the VOY time. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you will help us to keep up the spirit of thanksgiving, keep up the spirit of missionary work. Lord, thank you for our advisors. Thank you for the students. Thank you for leading everything. Lord, may you be with me right now and bless me, Lord. May your spirit teach us. May your spirit encourage us. To you be the glory, O oh God. Amen. Always give thanks. It is a lifestyle. It is something that we don't do only once. And uh, next, we have another verse saying, Be joyful when? Always. Always pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ lived a life of thanksgiving. Paul's main words here are, Praise, thanksgiving, if we can go to the next slide. Praise, thanksgiving, 
And then the next important words are always, continually, in all circumstances. In all circumstances. Speaking to one another with psalms and spiritual songs, sing, make music in your hearts. It almost sounds like Paul is talking about uh, making, having church worship, regular church worship. But no, Paul is talking about having a life of thanksgiving and of worship. But how can we have this attitude? It's an attitude that we have to have. How can we have this attitude of continually, especially in all circumstances, uh, be thankful? I believe uh, the answer lies in our perspective. We have to see the things from the right perspective. We need a proper perspective. One young lady wrote a letter home, uh, and she was in college, and she was telling her mother, Dear mom, sorry I haven't written sooner. I'm, my arm really has been broken. I broke it in my left leg when I jumped from the second floor of my dormitory. Yes, when we had a fire, we were lucky. A young service station attendant saw the blaze and called the fire department. They were there in minutes. I was in the hospital for a few days. Paul was uh, very nice, the serv uh, service station attendant. He came to see me every day. And because it was taking so long to get out, to get our dormitory available again, I moved in with him. He has been so nice. I must admit that I am pregnant. <laughs> Paul and I plan to get married just as soon as he can get a divorce. I hope things are fine at home. I'm doing fine. And I will write more when I get the chance. Love you. Your daughter, Susie. Now you must, you can imagine how shocked your mother is <laughs> receiving the first letter after a long time. Now next slide, that's not all. P.S. none of the above is true, but I did get a C in sociology and flunked chemistry. I just wanted you to receive this news in the proper perspective. It could be worse. It could be worse. And Susie is very right. Susie is right with what she's saying. Just the perspective, our perspective can change our attitude, it can change the way we uh, look at things, and it helps us also to prioritize uh, what is important and what is not so important. To be thankful in all, all circumstances, we need a proper perspective. We, and also to understand God, we need a proper perspective. Only then will we be able to give thanks to the Lord always. We are all here today to look back at our uh, Voice of Youth program, at the two weeks, what happened there. To look back at uh, the good times that we had, the experiences we made. But before we do that, we need to have the right perspective at the events that happened during the weeks in order to express our thankfulness. Rudyard Kipling, this man, Rudyard. Rudyard Kipling was a great writer and a poet. And he was one of the few that enjoyed his fame while he was still alive. One day, a man came up to him and he, uh, he told Rudyard, uh, um, Rudy Kipling, he told him that he just read an article where someone calculated the um, the amount of money that he makes and compared to how much that money is worth to each word that he wrote. And he said that that amount, that money amounts to $100 per word that Rudy Kipling wrote. Then he took a $100 bill out of his pocket and he gave it to Mr. Kipling. And he said, Mr. Kipling, here is $100. Now, Give me one of your $100 words. Mr. Kipling uh, rose his eyebrows and he was surprised. He certainly didn't know that his words were that much worth. But he looked at it for a second. He took it, he folded it, and he put it back in his pocket. And he said, thanks. Indeed, thanks is a word that's uh, worth $100, if not more. But the idea is that this word 
is needed and used everywhere. If we look at evolution, if we look at, forget God, forget the idea of God, why do people say thank you if it wasn't for the Lord? Why is it necessary to, to say thanks uh, and express our thanks? And I wanted to share with you one thing that the Bible teaches us about that. One thing very important about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has to be expressed. We need to express it. One of our verses we sing uh, in Psalm 100, uh, which says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Uh, if we can move on the next slide. You remember that in Luke uh, 17, Luke 17, we have the parable of the ten uh, lepers. And all of them were healed, right? All of them were healed. But only one of them came back to thank Jesus. Where are the other nine? I looked at, uh, at the other nine for a moment, and I was thinking, why are they so in a hurry? Where are they running to? So I continued thinking about what is their background? They weren't always sick. What was their life before? Maybe some of them uh, had a business, and a wife and a child. And when they got sick, they had to leave, and the wife and the child is left behind with the debt, and they have a lot of work to do. So now when he's healed, he's excited, and he's running back to his family. Another one might have uh, had a girlfriend, and they were in love a lot. And then when he got sick, she promised him, I will be waiting here for you. And when he got healed, excited, he started running back to her. And they might have had different backgrounds, but only one, only one took the time to come back and thank Jesus for what he had done. He was the only one willing to take that time because of what Jesus had done to him. And now look what Jesus says to him. Jesus says to him, rise and go for your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you, wow. The other 10 were healed also, right? The other ten were healed. But this man came back and Jesus tell him, your faith will has made you well. He tells him, rise, because he was on his knees, thanking Jesus for what he has done. And he tells him, your faith has made you well, because he was speaking about more than just a physical health. He was talking about a spiritual and a mental health. Thanksgiving is very important for us. How did you experience Voice of Youth? How, does, how did Voice of Youth influence you? Do you have the desire to come back and thank God for what you experienced? You know when you go out of Voice of Youth, uh, one prayer that we had with my group, uh, not only once, was uh, thanking, Lord, thanking the Lord that he gave us the opportuni opportunity to be there. Because we're not only influencing the people that we reach, God is using this time also to help you to grow, to be prepared for His coming. You grow and others grow at the same time. So have you had the desire to come back and thank Him? We too are made whole by thanksgiving. That's why we have to be here. We are made whole by thanksgiving. Psychologists, they say that... Uh, uh, gratitude and thanksgiving is the healthiest of all emotions. For you see, thanksgiving is not only giving uh, thanks to the receiver or giving good emotions to the giver. It is also good for the receiver. Both of them benefit. God appreciates our thanksgiving. It lifts him up and it glorifies him and thanksgiving endears him to us. It glorifies God and it brings him closer to us. But there's also the opposite effect. If our thanksgiving brings us closer to God, if we don't meet like here today, if we don't have the gratitude, 
it can pull us further away from God. Can we have the next slide? Uh, for although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. They knew God, but the lack of thanksgiving, the lack of glorification separated them from our God. That's why it is crucial that we take time to thank God for the experiences that we have. This passage almost seems to imply that we are, uh, if we are ungrateful to God, we will soon fall away. God is here today. God is in our presence. He is our audience when we come today together to worship Him. He is our audience when we give our testimony. How many of you knew since the morning that today we'll have uh, our voice of youth testimony giving? How many of you knew that we are meeting this afternoon, since, since the morning? Yes, I see some hands there, okay? Others didn't know. How many realized as I speak, before I speak now, how many realized that today is the birthday of the world? Today is Sabbath. Also a reason to give things, a reason to give thanks. And the Lord is blessing us continually. All this part, can be used to glorify God. Let us not be limited to just VOI. Let us take this time to glorify God completely in wholeness. And I want to give a, a next slide. I want to give some practical ideas of, of how you can give thanks to the Lord. First, spend time with Him. Not just one hour, but continually during the week. Second, when you give, when you forgive others, you thank the Lord. When you serve in His church, when you share His plan of salvation, when you reach out to hurting people, when you give God the best of uh, your time, talents, and pipes, when you praise Him enthusiastically from all your heart. These are all ways of giving thanks. I know all of these things you have experienced during your wo voice of youth. It was a routine. It was something that uh, really helped us grow spiritually during the voice of youth. All of those were present. But I want to encourage you that you continue as you are here. Voice of youth is a lifestyle. And you can live it here as you are in the school. Practice it while you study. And you will grow. You will grow. Why don't we continue? Why don't you continue to live this style here? And I'll, next slide is enter the gates Enter the gate with thanksgiving in your hearts. Don't just leave it with thanksgiving. Let us be voice of youth in campus also, not just out of the campus. This is my prayer.